Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Saurabh, joined by Lesha, and we're going to be talking about Microsoft Identity Platform. So Lesha, tell me more about what is Microsoft Identity Platform? Yeah, the Microsoft Identity Platform allows developers to build applications that can sign in all Microsoft identities. So organizational accounts, also referred to as Azure AD accounts, as well as personal Microsoft accounts. Okay. And it also lets them get tokens to call Microsoft APIs like Microsoft Graph. Oh, thanks so much for the introduction, Lesha. So how can we go about creating or integrating with the platform? Yeah, so let's start in the Azure portal. So mm -hmm. um, if you navigate to portal.azure.com, mm -hmm. and then we will go ahead and navigate to Azure Active Directory. Okay. And under that, we'll go to App Registrations. OK. So that will bring us to the App Registrations experience here. And once we're there, we can go ahead and click New Registration. And so that will bring up this registration page. Oh, cool. So here we can provide a name for our app. Um, so I'll just call this my test app. Um, next, we can choose um, which kind of accounts we want to support. So as I mentioned, we can support organizational accounts. Um, we can choose if we want them to be part of this directory only. This is the Contoso directory. Okay. Or we can choose accounts in any organizational directory. directory. And lastly, we can choose organizational accounts as well as personal Microsoft accounts. Okay. So this is by far the biggest um, so, uh, number of accounts that we can target. Um, and so we'll go ahead and choose that one. And then lastly, we can optionally provide a redirect URI. The redirect URI is where the authentication response will be sent after the user authenticates. Um, so we'll say we're building a web app that's hosted locally. And mm -hmm. so over here, we'll just enter um, localhost as our redirect URI. Okay. So once we've filled in all that information, we'll go ahead and click register, and our app will be created. Wait, that's it? That's all it takes to create an app? That's it. So oh. now the app is registered. Um, an application ID, also referred to as a client ID, is assigned to the application. And this is the, the piece that will be used in code to refer to this registration. We also see some additional details about the application, like the supported account types that we selected, um, the fact that a redirect URI was uh, registered as well. Um, and then we can see some links to documentation and some steps to get started. OK, so um, this is about creating the app. But what if I wanted to get some of my data using Microsoft Graph? How do I go about doing that? Yeah, so to set up your app to request permissions, you'll go ahead and navigate to this API permissions section mm -hmm. um, here. And then you'll select to add a permission. That will bring up um, a, a variety of APIs for you to choose from. And we'll go ahead and select Microsoft Graph. And then we'll have a choice between delegated permissions or application permissions. Um, so delegated permissions are used when there is a signed in user present. Mm -hmm. And application permissions are used when the application is running as a background service or a daemon. Okay. So we'll go ahead and choose delegated permissions. We'll have a user present in our app. Um, so then what kind of permissions would you like to request? Um, let's pick calendar. I'm, I, I want to build an app that uses somebody's calendar information or Logged in users' calendar information. OK, let's go ahead and select to read users' calendars. Okay. So we check that and click to add permissions. Mm -hmm. And then that is added to our list of requested permissions. And we get a notification telling us that permissions have changed. Okay. Now, because I'm signed in with an admin account, I can also go ahead and grant admin consent for these permissions. Okay. So I just will confirm that I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And once that's done, the status is reflected here in the admin consent required status. Okay. And so what this means is that when my users go to use my application, they won't need to consent to these permissions. OK. Awesome. So what if my um, app has an, uh, or you know, we have an architecture where we require uh, a client certificate or a secret to, to you know, for the app. So how do I go about accessing and configuring that piece? Yeah, so you would go ahead and navigate to the certificates and secrets section. Mm -hmm. And let's say we want to use a client secret, um, also referred to as an application password. We will go ahead and click new client secret okay. and provide a brief description. Um, and then we can choose when it will expire, uh, one year, two years, or never. OK. So I'll just go ahead and say that it'll expire in one year. And once 
once I click add there, I get the value of it. So it's really important to copy this value um, because this is the value that I need for my secret and I won't be able to retrieve it after. Okay. Um, I'll need to generate a new secret if I, if I lose this. And it's important to also okay. store it securely. So thanks for showing that, Lesha. Uh, I see there are a lot of other options here uh, in, this, uh, in these blades. So can you tell me more about what, what they get us? And yeah, so um, for the overview, that it's, that's already what we saw when we registered our, mm -hmm. our application. So we have the information about the app there. Um, for Quick Start, if, um, if your application matches the platforms that we have supported here, it's an easy way for you to get your application started. Okay. So you can go ahead and use one of those. Under branding, you can choose. Uh, you can change the name of your application, or you can upload a logo. Um, you can provide links to your terms of service and privacy statement. Um, typically, these things appear on the consent prompt when users are using your application. Okay. Under authentication, um, we can see the redirect URI that we registered earlier, as well as some as well as some other options. Um, under owners. We can add owners to be able to to be able to manage this registration as well. Mm -hmm. So if we have a coworker that's working with us on this project, we can add them here. Okay. And lastly, we have the manifest. And so this is a JSON representation of your app object. You can use this to modify properties that we don't have UI for, or if you find this method easier, you can just go ahead and modify the JSON directly, and, and that works as well. Okay. Awesome. So I do have a question about the API permissions when we picked, like uh, we were scrolling down that big giant uh, list that we had that we were able to pick permissions. Um, what if some developer is new to the platform and they want to know more about the permissions? Where do they go and find about what permissions they need and how, how they access it? Yeah, so for permissions, we have some links to documentation um, for the specific APIs. And so if we look at the Microsoft Graph API, we mm -hmm. have a link to documentation here. So if we just go ahead and click this link, It'll take us to a permissions reference. Okay, awesome. And this list all. And the so it has all the permissions the here. Okay, awesome. That's great. Thank you so much for showing us Lesha. I did not know app creation was so simple, and I can't wait to try it out myself. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us, and hope you guys enjoyed uh, the app creation experience as much as I did.